Buddha! Buddha! The eyes to the right, 293. The nose to the left, 46. Well, that's less than last time. Yeah. <laughs> For us, for you. <laughs> the eyes to the right, 293. The nose to the left, 46. So the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, however, I say by way of explanation for those who observe our proceedings, and the, the nods suggest they're well ahead of me, which I would expect, <laughs> the majority does not satisfy the requirements of the fixed term. Parliament's Act for the purpose of engendering the election that some seek. I am simply the messenger and I've reported the facts and I'm glad that the matter is of interest to those who are looking upstairs and thank you very much indeed. Order. Point of order, the Prime Minister. the House to trust the people, but once again the opposition think they know better. They want the British Prime Minister to go to a vital negotiation without the power to walk away. They want to delay Brexit yet again, yet again without further reference to those who voted for it, handing over to Brussels an extra £250 million a week for no purpose, enough to upgrade more than five hospitals or train five thousand new nurses and most egregiously of all not only have they refused to choose the way ahead they have now twice denied the British people their say in an election the house cannot choose it will not let anyone else choose Mr Speaker it resolves only to be irresolute decides only to be undecided determined to dither adamant for drift and so now the House will move to adjourn and resume the state opening in the Queen's speech on October the 14th. And I hope the opposition will use that time to reflect. Meanwhile, this government will press on with negotiating a deal. While preparing to leave without one. And I will go to that crucial summit in Brussels on October the 17th. And no matter how many devices this Parliament invents to tie my hands, I will strive, Mr Speaker, to get an agreement in the national interest. This Government will not delay Brexit any further. We will not allow the emphatic verdict of the referendum to be slowly suffocated by further calculated drift and paralysis. And while the opposition run from their duty to answer to those who put us here, they cannot hide forever. The moment will come. The moment will come when the people will finally get their chance to deliver their verdict, Mr Speaker on how faithfully this House executed their wishes, and I am determined that they will see that it was this Government that was on their side. I think we've had quite enough of the playground politics for the Conservative Party this evening. The one thing the Prime Minister didn't say was that he was going to obey the law of this country. He, he did not say he acknowledged or accepted three votes that have taken place in this Parliament. And under his request, the House is now due, apparently, this evening to be prorogued for one of the longest prorogations in history. Simply in order.
order to avoid any questioning of what he is doing or not doing, simply to avoid discussion about Yellowhammer, particularly to avoid any discussion about the proposals he has or hasn't or do or don't exist that have been put to the European Union. Mr Speaker, this government is a disgrace and the way the Prime Minister operates is a disgrace. Uh, be quiet, Jeremy Corbyn. Mr. Speaker, I hope the Prime Minister will reflect on the issue of prorogation and shutting down Parliament to avoid a government being held to account, because that is exactly what he has done today and proposes to do to this country. The question rings. Will the Prime Minister obey the law? Nobody knows that answer because the Prime Minister will not answer that question. Well, at the very least, he would answer it in this kind of squirrely way of, no, I'm not going to Brussels, but yes, I will obey the law, and nobody quite knows what that means. The Prime Minister has just lost a second vote in regards to whether or not there will be a snap election. There will not be a snap election, at the very least, not immediately. They will have to be one at some point because this prime minister, angry and belligerent, flails its um, gonads about parliament, utterly powerless. Parliament has no capacity to discharge anything. It is utterly and entirely broken. That was part of the plan that Boris Johnson enacted. However, no snap election, meaning he's stuck with that parliament for the time being. And he's stuck with this unenviable choice of, are you going to go to Brussels and shame yourself before the world and before your party, not to mention the United Kingdom again, or are you going to break the law? Or are you going to come up with something else in between? Something else happened. At the end of the night, because as you know, Parliament was prorogued, this happened. Mr. Speaker, the Lords who are authorised by Her Majesty's Commission to declare, to declare her royal assent to acts passed by both houses and to also declare the prorogation of Parliament desire the presence of this honourable house. Really? No. 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 She's there to shut down Parliament. That's essentially what she's at. Essentially, the Queen has called for the prorogation of Parliament. I am here to shut it down. Now, the wild part is, all of the scuffle and everything else is because Parliament entirely disagrees with this. Because Parliament knows that Boris Johnson is doing this purely and entirely to create a pressure scenario, meaning... He can go without scrutiny because Parliament won't be in session. Now, he's essentially bookending Parliament. Parliament is going to be out for a period of time anyway. But essentially, he's bookending the time in which Parliament is going to be out, making it around five weeks. They leave on the 31st of October. They get back in on October the 14th. Or do they? Or do they? An interesting ruling came out today, in fact saying that this prorogation was unlawful and thereby null and void. Welcome to the Soapbox.
My name is Jamal Thomas. This is the Progressive Soapbox. Guys, if you dig this content and you find yourself coming back to this channel often, please like, share, subscribe. You can always support through PayPal or Patreon. This was an interesting ruling that came down today. Take a look at this. This is Scottish court. The Scottish appellate court overturned a ruling that came forward earlier in a lower court dealing with this notion of the legality of Boris Johnson's prorogation, his suspension of parliament. The first court says legal. Scottish court says not so much. And the point that the Scottish court made was it's unlawful because his reason for doing it reeks of, of self-interest. He's not doing it because he needs to do it in this way. He's doing it purely entirely because he wants to stop parliament from being able to administer oversight. Their point was that is not a sufficient reason by which to do this. Let's hear the, the judge himself. Each opinion expresses the view that the advice given by the government to Her Majesty the Queen to prorogue Parliament from 9th September to 14th October was unlawful and that therefore the prorogation itself is unlawful. The court is conscious that its view dif differs from that of the Divisional Court of the Queen's Bench Division in England and Wales. The matter is likely therefore to require resolution by the United Kingdom Supreme Court. So what should we make of this all? Lord so this is going to go to the Supreme Court and Boris Johnson has already put in for this to be appealed. They've, uh, but let's see, Scottish Appellate Court judge have declared Boris Johnson's decision to suspend Parliament in the run up to the October Brexit deadline unlawful. Three judges chaired by Lord Calloway, Scotland's most senior judge, overturned an earlier ruling that the courts did not have the power to interfere with the Prime Minister's political decision to progr... Pro I keep calling it progregation, but progr... Uh, progr... Ah! Progregation of Parliament. Lawyers acting for 75 opposition MPs and peers argued Johnson's decision to suspend Parliament for five weeks was illegal and in breach of the Constitution as it was designed to stifle parliamentary debate and action on Brexit. Now, Scotland, if you remember, didn't want to leave. In fact, Scotland didn't want to leave in spades. Um, and every time the Scottish National Party got the opportunity to get up, that's all they had to talk about. Now, to be fair, Brexit, for the most part, dominated the debate in the UK for the last, what, two, three years. So every time they got up, they were, for the most part, talking about Brexit most of the time. And ergo, you know, they wouldn't shut up about not wanting to leave. The judges failed to issue, an, they, it, this is an interesting point. They didn't enter an injunction, meaning they didn't compel Parliament to go back into session. They let it ride. And they let it ride until the next decision comes in because their assumption was there's going to be a decision from the standpoint of the Supreme Court of the UK. And because there's going to be a Supreme Court decision, just let the Supreme Court make, get the final say. The court issued an official summary of its decision declaring the prorogation order was null and void. But Calloway said they were deferring the final decision to the interdict, on an interdict, to the UK Supreme Court, which will hold a three-day hearing next week. On September 17th, an emergency hearing is going to be, oh, be heard on whether or not the prorogation is legal. And if it is found to be illegal, they can order Parliament to go back into session. UK politics, man, it's fantastic.